In this video, I want to talk about one of the more fundamental ideas in physiology, and that is the idea of feedback. Not feedback. One of the most important things to understand about how the body regulates its variables, things like ion concentration and blood gases and even your temperature is that it's always going to be a range. Homeostasis, let's remember that word, homeostasis is not about keeping things at a specific set point, it's about keeping these different variables within the body within a range. And one of the most common forms of feedback that we're going to see in anatomy and physiology is referred to as negative feedback. And so one of the concepts that pops up over and over and over again that folks often struggle with is the concept of this negative feedback loop. Okay, so for any variable, say we're, we're just going to call it variable x, we have, we can do a little graph, right? And we can put time down here and we can put, you know, amount. And this can be amount of sugar in the blood. It can be amount of oxygen in your tissues, whatever. And what we see is that amount will go up, and then when it gets to the edge of the homeostatic range, so if I use dashed lines here to represent the homeostatic range, when our variable gets up to the top of that range, some mechanism is going to bring it back down. And then when it gets to the bottom of the acceptable range, some mechanism is going to bring it back up and then back down. And so our goal with our negative feedback loop is to keep all of these values within this homeostatic range. So what I'm going to do in the next couple of minutes is give you an example of a negative feedback loop that you're intimately familiar with, one that is going to be in most modern buildings, and then we're going to apply what we learned about kind of the general concept to a specific set of structures in the human body. So let's get rid of this and put this up. And here we have four different components of things that you would find in a room. The first of these is the temperature of the room, represented by the degree C sign. And this is going to be our Sorry about that. This is going to be our variable. This is the thing that can change. So room temperature can go up, room temperature can go down. So if the variable changes, that's going to be detected by some sort of sensor. In this case, it's a thermometer. So in your room, you will often find a thermometer, and that thermometer is usually attached to some other device, like a thermostat. In our example here, the thermostat is going to act as an integrator. The thermostat is going to take the information from the sensor and make a decision. You'll notice that on our little thermostat here, we have two set values. We have a low end, in this case 19 degrees Celsius, and a high end, 21 degrees. So it's the job of the integrator to take the information from the sensor and say, is the information I'm getting above or below my acceptable range? And if the answer is yes, so for example, if room temperature goes up, then the integrator will talk to an effector, and the effector is the thing that can actually effect change, okay? So the effector, in this case an air conditioner, poorly drawn, but an air conditioner, will kick on, and the air temperature, the air conditioner will bring the air temperature down. Air temperature goes down, that is detected by the sensor, the sensor says, hey, integrator, the temperature is now 20 degrees Celsius. The integrator says 20 degrees is within my acceptable range, and therefore it tells the effector to close. So we have a loop here, 
and we're constantly monitoring the variable using the sensor and making a decision whether or not to activate our effector. So an example of that in the human body is still going to be thermal regulation. So over here we still have the body's temperature. Okay? And the body temperature, so this is our variable still, and our variable is going to be detected by thermoceptors in the skin. So we have special receptors, special nerve endings in the dermis of our skin that are going to be measuring temperature. And these are going to communicate with the hypothalamus. So the receptors in the skin are our sensors. The hypothalamus is going to act as our integrator. Sorry about the very poorly drawn hypothalamus. And then the hypothalamus makes a decision. Is the temperature too hot? And if the answer is yes, the temperature is above our homeostatic set range, then it's going to talk to one effector. In this case, that effector is going to be some Ekron sweat glands. If the temperature is too low, then the hypothalamus will talk to another effector, that being our skeletal muscle. Okay, so we'll either sweat or shiver. The effect of those is that it will change the variable. The change in the variable will be detected by the sensor. The sensor will speak to the integrator, and whatever was going on will be ceased once that activity is brought back within regular homeostatic range. I hope this helps. See you next video.